Oh, welcome. Let's see if we add. Yeah. Oh, it's a win. Hello. Hi. Where do we find you today? I am good. It is a beautiful day, and I have been uh, feeling much better, so that's a win. Oh, oof. It's been crazy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has. Thanks for jumping on. Yeah. I think we'll, we'll test this and see how it goes. I'm just going to fire one question at you, and then we'll okay. save it and see what happens. Okay. And then, uh, and then we'll do another one. Okay. It'll be awesome. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I have looked to you for mm -hmm. knife expertise, and uh, the goal is to see out of all of your time in knives and uh, kitchenware awesomeness, as our uh, friends are joining, um, okay. how you respond to, uh, to this question. Okay. Uh, my brother-in-law says my knives suck. Okay. Uh, that I should buy Japanese ones. And uh, my question is, is he right? Well, there are some... What do you think, Tara? I do not agree that Japanese knives are best for every home. But that's a lot of knife experience in that, in that statement. Um, there's a lot of beauty to Japanese knives. There's also a lot of particulars to them at different points. And one of the things I believe in is finding the right knife for you versus just going with what's kind of standard out there right now saying, this is the best or that's the best. Or um, There's so many options and so many variables that make knife use fun when you find the right knife. So that would be my statement. I. I couldn't want to upset your brother-in-law, but no, I wouldn't completely agree with that exact statement. Yeah, yeah. So I can I can get other ones. Uh, so. Hassan uh, H plug here jumped in and he said German or bust. <laughs> <laughs> huge component to what German knives bring to the table. That's one of the issues, you know. It's like yeah. So, but as you're talking to people about knives and they're trying to go back and forth between German and Japanese. Um, how do you help them see the differences? Typically, the first thing is you know, and, and understanding the aesthetic of the differences between the two. If we're saying very general terms, typically German knives will have a three bolster, excuse me, a three rivet style handle with a full tang. And there's two pieces of material on either side of that tang called scales. And it can be any material, but the shape of that handle is fairly consistent. And then you have in what a lot of people are saying German knives are meaning a full bolstered knife. So a bolster that goes all the way to the cutting edge and adds heft and weight for that design, that profile typically of a German knife for a heavy rock chopping use. And it's hard to defeat those knives for that purpose. They're made for it. They've, they've been designed yeah. to do those Ooh. things exceptionally well. And I, you know, I have a love for them. Obviously, I worked for Wustoff for years and, yeah. you know, so I love German knives. There's just a difference, I would say. Um, and looking at a Japanese knife, most people are imagining that wa style handle, that straight wood handle. And yeah. it does feel of those knives dramatically. Also the same thing, that handles come from hundreds of years of design and engineering to make it the, the right way. So a lot of times I'm describing knives while I'm also wanting people to understand how they use their knives and what feels comfortable and secure and safe in their hand. Because yeah. you might, eyes might really like it, but if you keep changing your grip or if you find you're afraid to push that knife through a task because it doesn't feel steady or secure in your hand, you've got the wrong knife. You've got it the might, wrong knife on paper but it's the wrong knife you know yeah yeah so it's steady and safe being more important than style is what i'm hearing you say i think so because yeah. style, 
there's so much out there. Style is findable. Finding what works, the weight, the balance, the feel, you, you can find a style if you want to. If you love the way a German knife feels, there's, you know, Nemesk knives, which are beautiful and they're a few thousand dollars. They're everything a German knife should be. Um, but they're also beautiful and they're, and they're Damascus and there's all kinds of fun to that. So yeah, finding comfortable, safe and well balanced in your hands for your tasks is number one choice. So a lot of times I can find something that's a, a handle style, a color, a blade design that works for what your eyes want. Um, if I just, <laughs> works for you i'm laughing because my son um is getting like soccer cleats and he doesn't like the colors of the ones we're buying <laughs> it's like oh, need new ones and they're like oh come on <laughs> Got a new just made you fast I yeah have... right yeah <laughs> right so how do you how do you how do you think about knives that have tendencies in both styles so I like, like They'll have like a Japanese front, maybe even Japanese steel, but a German handle or the German companies making the Japanese yeah. styles, right? I like hybrids because sometimes the traditionalness of a, let's say, a Zwilling J. Hinkle's uh, Pro S series. Um, sure. It's a knife that was designed 75, 100 years ago. So... It, it, if it's still relevant to what you're using now and what you like now, that's great. But now hybrids are making a, a strong play because the the cooking community is a bit of a hybrid now. We don't all oh. just watch exclusively a French cooking show. We don't watch just exclusively a Japanese cooking show. So you're seeing all these techniques and we imitate them and we might have a weird technique that's not quite right for that, but it's uh, it. The, the hybrid knives will help, you know, I mean, if you kind of get a feeling for what you like and doing a hybrid makes sense to me in many ways. Um, I, because I do a lot with professionals, right? Yeah. I've guys that are like, Hey, I, I want this knife to do this, but you know, for the next year or two, it's got to cut 150 pounds of potatoes every day. Right. But I is it in a year and a half when I get a promotion or I get a job change and I'm going to do like more refined stuff. Um, relating that into the house, it's, it's like, maybe you don't cook as much right now, but you get into it more, the more you enjoy your knives. In that case, let's make sure that there's knives focusing in a direction that you're going to go. So yeah, I see a lot of hybrid techniques just with people in the store on that board. You know, it's like, I see this, they're using it in a push cut. We've, we've, we'll talk more, but I mean, in yeah. those things, and, I, and then right after that, they're, they're rock chopping because they're, they're practicing mincing. Those are two totally different techniques. <laughs> it's, it's fascinating. We uh, are starting to throw knife courses and you'll have German knives and Japanese knives out. And uh, boy, it's, it's, it's so easy to go back to your habit. Mm -hmm. So you just learn pinch and you're gonna push. Yeah. And Okay, now let's change from a carrot to a cucumber and suddenly we're rocking. And you're like, that knife's not for that. <laughs> it's like, so, and yeah, often, super interesting. Sorry, I didn't mean to speak over you. So, oftentimes when you're showing something to somebody, you show them the technique for that knife and they feel it and it makes sense. But you have to learn that little step sometimes. Because yeah. sometimes we yeah. have like, Wild knife skills at home. <laughs> I see, I've seen it. That's one way to describe it. My, my knife skills are wild. Like, listen, you got to look out. So, hey, I did a knife two weeks ago on a acorn squash because I was just, you know, I was spaced yeah. out. We were talking to somebody. We were looking at watching a movie that was on and, and it was just a distraction for a second. And, I felt it happen and I looked down like, really? I, really? I just did this. And that happens all the time. I mean, pros, all the time. like something happens and you're just like, wow. I did. Oops. Also, you know. <laughs> Moving on. Cool. So. Well, hey, I will go back to my brother-in-law and give him a much more nuanced answer next time other than just telling him he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I've been both ways in my in my life, you know. <laughs> uh, I have a new one to answer for you now, other okay. than you're wrong. So, okay. well, awesome. Thanks for doing this first one. We've got some more, and uh, we'll see how this goes. All right. Sounds good.